Sup, Spooktube? I'm Leon the Paperback Maniac, coming at you with a mega mailbox horror update. We've got a plethora of titles here today. We've got some 90s zebra, some leisure, some charter for all you charter fans out there. Uh, and I am soups excited because after the regular horror paperbacks, we've also got the full set of an obscure 80s pulp adventure series co-written by none other than channel favorite John Shirley. So you definitely want to stick around for that. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, now, before I dive into the mail items, I do want to show a few titles I picked up from the old brick and mortar. Uh, Bookman, a bookshop that I frequent quite often, uh, has recently had some sales uh, going on the past month, including a 20% off sale last Monday for Memorial Day. And you know I hit that up. So uh, we'll start with those. Here is the card uh, for Bookman, a great shop in, in Orange. They recently relocated. Uh, I've talked about that. I, I'm not a huge fan of the new shop, but I'm kind of getting used to I'm getting more used to it. Um, so the first book that I picked up there is Mary Mary, and this was written by B.W. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Batin. I used to say Batten like an ignoramus, but... I think it's Batin, like Rob Botin. Uh, this book was published by Pocket in 1985. Now, B.W. Batin also wrote uh, supernatural horror novels under the pen name Warner Lee. I have all of those. Um, and I believe that the ones that he published under his own name are um, not supernatural and, you know, pretty gnarly and intense, and including this one from what I've heard. I am planning on reading a B.W. Bettine book uh, this summer, uh, so I'll get I'll see finally what it's all about. But yeah, this one looks pretty uh, creepy and uh, and fun. It's the first one, and then the second book of his I found is Demented, and uh, this book was published by Fawcett Gold Medal in 1988. It's another Fawcett uh, Gold Medal book to add to the collection. Uh, if you haven't seen my collection video on that imprint, uh, definitely check it out, yo. All right, next up, uh, we got a book called Ghosts of Night and Morning by Marvin K. This book was published by Charter in 1987. Apparently, it's a sequel to a book called A Cold Blue Light, which sounds familiar, but I can't recall whether I own that one or not, so I'll you know, have to keep a lookout for it. But this one, uh, the cover definitely uh, you know, caught my eye. I absolutely love the, uh, the lettering there, the, the font of the title, and of course it's embossed. Uh, very, very striking. So, Okay, next up we've got a book called The Ritual by R.R. R. Walters. And this book was also published by Charter in 1980. And it kind of looks uh, kind of similar to the Mary Mary cover. Um, yeah, but I do uh, I do like that design. It's uh, pretty cool looking. So yeah, I thought I'd give it a shot. I was not familiar with this title before I saw it. Okay, next up uh, we've got the Seventh Child by. Um, Brooke Stanwood, and this book was published by Dell in 1982, and it has some of the most amazing step back cover art there. That is just fantastic. Lovely, lovely artwork. Okay, next up, I picked up a copy of The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. Uh, I have another copy of this, but I, I like that cover. Um, this one was, uh, this edition was published by Watermill Press in 1980, though it was first uh, published in 1897. Very, very colorful there. Um, yeah, it looked cool. Okay, next up, we've got uh, Nightlife by Ray Garten, one of my favorite authors. Uh, this book was published by Leisure in 2007. Uh, has just an absolutely atrocious cover. I certainly was not, uh, you know, 
uh, captivated by the cover. That's not why I bought it. Although the uh, the blurb there by Richard Lehman uh, doesn't hurt. What did he write? Uh, Garten never fails to go for the throat. And I would agree with that. Um, yeah, he's a great writer. So, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, I This book does sound like a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to checking it out eventually. Okay, next up, we've got uh, a book that I've owned before. This is The Bad Place by Dean Kuntz. This book was published by Berkeley in 1990. Um, you know, I see these Dean Koontz books all the time. He's, you know, he's like a local writer. I mean, he's like one of the most popular writers ever. But his books, you know, you always see them. But this is one that um, I always remember this cover. Like when I was a kid in the bookstore, like browsing and going into the horror section always, I always remembered, you know, this cover with the, with the beach house. And I've always, you know, been curious about this book. Um, it takes place in Orange County, which is where I live, and you know I'm curious always of books that take place where I live, like I, I imagine most people are. So um, yeah, I figured uh, you know why not? I would like to give this sh a shot. The books of Dean Koontz is that I that I've read, the little of his that I've read, I have enjoyed. I know that he is kind of a you know patchy writer, but I figured why not check this one out. Okay, and then the last book that I uh, got at Bookman is. The Living Dark by uh, Stephen Gresham, adding to my Stephen Gresham collection. Uh, this was published by Zebra in 1991. And uh, yeah, you can't, really can't uh, pass up these, uh, zebra, these zebra books when you see them. So uh, I had to hop on that. And then I kind of went on a little bit of a zebra kick. Um, and uh, so the first few books, now that we're getting into the mail stuff, are, uh, are zebra titles. Uh, so we'll, we'll dive into those. First one here is called Fiend by C. Dean Anderson. Uh, this was published by Zebra in 1994. Uh, C. Dean Anderson, I not too long ago read a short story of his in Slaughterhouse Magazine, and it was fucking gnarly uh it was and, and i know that his novels are in super gnarly as well and, and, and especially like torture tomb is an infamous one i don't have that one but this one I, I actually this is new to me and it actually surprisingly has very very high a uh, very high rating on goodreads which is rare and what really did it for me is when i read the short synopsis on goodreads i'm gonna i'm gonna read uh the synopsis to you it says uh toxique a fictitious comic book heroine, born in the vivid imagination of a lo lonely young boy, comes alive to do battle with an evil killer on a bloodthirsty quest to eliminate young comic book fans everywhere. <laughs> it's like, okay, that sounds freaking amazing. Uh, so yeah, I was like, I will definitely check that out. Okay, the next zebra book we've got is The Devil's Cradle by Kate Stewart. This book was published by Zebra in 1992. And uh, yeah, you just gotta love those green ectoplasmic hands uh, tending to that baby. It's just very, very striking. Zebra you definitely went all out on their covers. And I really, all of these are the 90s books. I, I prefer Zebra's like early 90s output. I, I, I prefer them to the, uh, you know, like the skeleton phase that everyone loves Zebra for in the 80s. I think these are a lot more interesting. Uh, Post-skeleton phase Zebra is, uh, is my thing. Uh, stuff like this, just really, really cool. Uh, but this next one just may be my favorite. This was new to me, and when I saw it, I was like, holy shit. Uh, this book, so this is Demon's Fright by uh, Penelope Banka Kreps, and it was published by Zebra in 1992. And just look, look at that cover very carefully. Um, that is amazing. Uh, just those hands, by the way, I don't know if you can see it in the light. Uh, they are, of course, in bar relief. I mean, so such fine detail. And like the, the kids on the beach, I mean, that is just a lovely, lovely work of art. I How could you not want to pick this book up when you see that? Uh, I was I was just enamored of it. The moment I saw it, knew I had to have it. 
Um, really, really good condition as well. The, the one that I got. So, um, yeah, I will, I will read this book, any book that has a cover that amazing. Um, yes, I, I'm super excited for that one. Okay. Uh, the next zebra book we're looking at is Stones by Pat Graverson. And, uh, this book was published by Zebra in 1991. And then the last zebra book we're going to look at is The Dark One by Guy N. Smith. And uh, this one was published by Zebra in 1995. Uh, I did not know previously that uh, Guy N. Smith had published with Zebra. But you take Guy N. Smith, you take Zebra, you take uh, Evil Kids, put it all together, and, uh, you know, you've got me sold. So I was like, hell yeah, I'll check that out. And uh, this is one of the Guy and Smith books, I believe, that is set in America because he did write some books, not very many as far as I know, but I, I believe this one is like an American set book. So that, that'll be interesting to see, you know, how, how his take. I love to read foreigners' uh, takes on America, especially, you know, when they don't live here. But um, yeah, looks fun. Okay, next up, we've got a book called The Surrogate by David Combs. And uh, this book was published by Avon in 1982. That's a pretty, pretty cool cover, pretty striking. I, I believe I have a couple other David Combs books somewhere <laughs> amid my shelves, my, my uh, packed shelves there. But uh, yeah, that one, that one looks pretty neat. This one might be the most interesting discovery I've made lately. Uh, here, we have The God Tree by James Demers. This book was published by Paper Jacks in uh, 1975, though it looks like it was first published in 1974. What an intriguing cover, right? I mean, you've got God there in the tree. And uh, I have no idea what this is about, but I am super intrigued. And uh, and I feel that Paper Jacks is one of the more interesting uh, imprints of this uh, like vintage era. And I'm always on the lookout for you know Paper Jacks horror books. And so I was really really excited when I saw this one. Uh, really great to have another one to to add to the collection. This looks very very intriguing. Okay, next up, uh, we've got a book called After Sundown by Randall Boyle. This is a book that uh, I had heard about. Um, it, it was on my radar, and then it was recommended to me not long ago by Marina Schneider, and um, I know that she's got great taste, and I owned, um, I have a couple of his other books. I've got a no some of his novelizations and uh, his second novel, Monster, which I hear is great. And I'm really, you know, looking forward to reading that one. But this one, um, you know, sounds really cool. It looks really cool. Seems, it seems like it's got kind of a shining vibe. But uh, yeah, I thought I would check it out. Um, yeah, Randall Boyle, just heard nothing but great things about him. So figured why not? Uh, I don't know if I said this one was published by Charter in 1989. All right, next up, we've got a book called Let There Be Dark by Alan Lee Harris. This book was published by Jove in 1994. This is another book that I've heard uh, pretty good things about, despite the kind of nondescript cover. Uh, so I thought, yes, I'll check that out. Um, Sounds pretty intriguing, kind of a religious themed horror, I believe. All right, uh, next up, we've got uh, Richard Lehman title here. Uh, this is one that surprisingly I ne never owned before. This is The Woods Are Dark. And uh, this is the, the headline edition published in uh, 1991. Uh, this book was first published by New English Library, I believe, in 1983. And uh, it's got, you know, some of that amazing uh, Steve Crisp artwork. I'm a huge fan of his, uh, the stuff that he did for Headline. 
And uh, yeah, I you know this is a Richard Lehman book that I have been curious about. I know it's one of his first. I think this is this his first published novel, or was that the seller? It's one of his earlier um, novels, and uh, yeah, I've been curious about it for some time now. So I thought I should do something about that. So okay, and then the last book before we uh, get into our next segment here is *The Being* by. Um, Michael Redfin. This book was published by Leisure in 1988. And uh, I love that cover. Um, I love how, okay, if you look here on the back, the, the back blurb, it says, uh, light years ahead of close encounters. You see that? And then it says, the most awe-inspiring and ultimately terrifying novel of the year. Although uh, I believe that's some pretty terrible mismarketing because this book, is, I don't even think it's a horror novel. I think it's like a straight up like science fiction novel with maybe some horror undertones. But um, yeah, that, that cover is great. And uh, you know, it's like an alien invasion story. That sounds fun, right? So, all right, that is, that's the horror stuff. All right, now I'm going to, uh, we're going to get to this series that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So, so I recently uh, found out that from 1984 to 1987, there was a post-apocalyptic SF horror uh, men's adventure series called The Traveler, uh, written by D.B. Drum, which is actually the pen name for John Shirley and Ed Naha. Now, John Shirley, I have a whole video, an appreciation video for him. I love him. Uh, I've talked about him before. And, um, and Ed Naha is, uh, he was like, a, a, like an SF and like mystery writer. He did a lot of screenplays back in the day. He, he wrote a lot of screenplays for Charles Band and Empire Pictures like in the 80s, including like Troll. Uh, he wrote the screenplay for Dolls. That was actually a good one. Uh, but uh, Chud 2, Bud the Chud, not a good one. Um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, he wrote uh, Doll Man, etc. And, and he also wrote uh, some, a couple of horror novels, like original horror novels. He wrote one titled, um, gosh, I reviewed it and I don't remember, oh, Orphans. And I, that was one of my earlier book reviews on this channel. Uh, you can, you know, check that out if you want. But yeah, so apparently he and John Shirley collaborated on this SF men's adventure series called the series called The Traveler, and these things are just beauties to behold. I am so excited to have these. So, um, so, so we've got the full set here. There are thirteen books. So here we go. So we're gonna start with um, Traveler number one. This is called Fight. Or first you fight, okay? And this one was published in June of 1984. I absolutely love that cover. Uh, it really brings to mind the original one sheet movie poster for uh, Trancers, uh, one of the early uh, Charles Band uh, Empire uh, films. But just amazing, right? And um, yeah, apparently the series concerns this like. Um, He's like an ex-Special Forces soldier who is um, kind of just like roaming the post-nuke wasteland of America and, you know, dealing with whatever comes his way, whether that be like motorcycle gangs, thugs, uh, criminals, mutants, uh, cannibalistic savages, <laughs> just um, seems so, so fun. So that's book number one. Did I say that was published in uh, June of uh, 1984? Okay, then we've got Traveler number two, um, Kingdom Come. And this one was published in July of 1984. Absolutely incredible. Amazing artwork there. All right, then we've got Traveler number three. The Stalkers. This one uh, was published in September of 1984. Okay, then we've got Traveler number four, To Kill a Shadow. 
And this one was published in November of 1984. You gotta love that. I mean, it, it looks like a canon, like, like a poster for a canon film from that time. I mean, where's Chuck Norris, right? Just, just fantastic. Okay, next we've got Traveler number five, Road War. This one was published in February of 1985. Definitely got those Mad Max vibes going on. Um, and uh, by the way, you guys should be reading the taglines of all these uh, if you haven't been. This one says, uh, he's blasting his way to the end of the wasteland in search of a treasure called death. I don't even know what the hell that means, but that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, that is just, just utterly fantastic. Okay, next up is Traveler number six, Border War. Uh, and this one was published in June of 1985. Just another absolutely amazing cover. Look at all that stuff that's going on there. Look at this dude. Look at that hawk. It's just, just incredible. All right, next up... Traveler number seven, The Road Ghost. This one was published in October of 1985. That tagline says, um, even if vengeance meant a suicide standoff, he swore someone was going to pay. It's just awesome. Okay, next... We've got Traveler number eight, Terminal Road. This one uh, was published in February of 1986. And yes, they have uh, started recycling <laughs> taglines, which is hilarious, but uh, another amazing cover. I mean, the, the testosterone is palpable, right? I mean, you can feel it. It's just, yeah. Okay, number nine, Traveler number nine is uh, The Stalking Time. And this one uh, was published in June of 1986. Really, really cool. Then we've got Traveler number 10, Hell on Earth. And this one was published in October of 1986. Okay, next, we've got Traveler number 11, The Children's Crusade. Uh, this one was published in February of 1987. So in this one, apparently the Lost Boys show up to help. That's cool. All right, two more. <laughs> next up, we've got Traveler number 12, The Prey. And this one was published in September of 1987 just an absolutely <laughs> glorious piece of art there uh and this tagline says he's playing a vicious game of hunt and kill and only the fittest will survive that's right i mean our man looks pretty fit so uh i'm confident that he's gonna make it but uh yeah we'll see that's uh yeah that's number 12 the penultimate one and then finally We've got Traveler number 13, Ghost Dancers. And this one was published in December of 1987. And that one, the tagline says, at the end of the road, the lone warrior of the wasteland faced his deadliest enemy, himself. So, ooh, do we have a little introspection there at the end? Uh, who knows? That's, uh, that sounds great. So, yes. That is the full set of the Traveler series by D.B. Drum, which uh, was the pen name of uh, John Shirley and Ed Naha. And uh, yeah, 
I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a blast to read. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe after I finish Mutants Amok, which is a series I've been taking my sweet ass time uh, reading and reviewing, I've got, I think, three more, but I'm going to read, I'm going to try to wrap those up, you know, fairly soon. But maybe after that, I'll just dive into these and just read them like back to back. I usually, I'm not a binger, but this is, seems, I mean, these are so short and it's like serialized. So I feel like you could just binge all those and, uh, yeah, it just seems seems like a blast. But um, yeah, that was it. That that was the that was the haul right for this video. Uh, hope you guys uh, got a kick out of that. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, come back soon. Uh, I I've been meaning to have uh, my next book review up. I, I I'm gonna think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I, I try to do it the last few days. This shit just keeps coming up. Uh, but uh, hope to have another book review up soon. And then uh, it's June. It's already, we're in summer, which is crazy. Um, I am going to be starting uh, a series that I, I mentioned earlier called Satanic Summer, uh, a book review series where I review books dealing with Satan and the devil. Or, or maybe not. Maybe they're just mismarketed. Uh, but that should be a lot of fun. Uh, that'll be after my next book review. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for that and other fun stuff. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Take it easy. I need to get the hell out of here. I'm going to go to the bookstore. Peace out.